Okay, so there we go. Oh, okay. So the first thing we're going to do with this uh, reduction oxidation reduction reactions is learn how to properly balance that. Once again, much like the acid base titration, there this is going to be a stepwise process. If you got to do this for a test, I'm not sure if I'm assigning this or not. I have not thought this far ahead. But if we actually do this for the test, write down these steps, practice this a couple times, do these steps, and it will be a lot easier. So we're going to use electrons to balance the charges. You can't just balance the atoms because, like, if I, it because the charges you might have two moles of this guy reacting, even though you don't, it's not abundantly clear you're gonna have two moles of that because you gotta balance charges as well as atoms. This is a step beyond the balancing equations that we did in the first thing, in the first semester. So we're gonna to have to split a chemical reaction into two half reactions, the oxidation half and the reduction half. We're going to balance each individually and then put them back together in such a way that the electrons balance. And if the electrons balance, then we're good. But if they don't balance, then you're like, it's not going to quite work. So <clears throat> the four steps are one. Uh, well, actually, there might be a few more steps, but for the simple ones, one, find the uh, two half reactions and split them up. Two, balance the elements. Three, balance the charges. And four, then recombine. That's the simple one. Like, so zinc plus oxygen is oxidized to form zinc oxide. Now I'm gonna split this compound up into its two component charges. We know oxygen is usually two minus and zinc is usually two plus. Now, if you balance this in a normal world like situation without doing the oxidation, you could still get this one right. Because you'd put a two here in front of the zinc oxide and a two in front of the zinc. <coughs> and you would actually be right. But looking at this from a half reaction, you'll see why that, see this is really important and why that is. So I split zinc goes to zinc two plus. O2 goes to O2 minus. So the first thing you do once you split this up is you make sure, well, there's one zinc on the left, one zinc on the right. Well, there's two oxygens on the left, two oxygens on the right. So you wanna make sure the elements are balanced. Now here's what's the first thing that's really new and that's adding charges. So we can only add electrons. We cannot add positive charges. So we always add electrons to one side or the other so that both sides are the same charge. Zinc being a pure element is zero. Zinc in a compound is two plus. So in order to get zero and two plus to be equal, we have to add two minus to the right side. So I'm adding two electrons here. So zinc, this tells me zinc loses two electrons. Zinc is oxidized. Oxygen, there's two of them that are O2 neutral and two oxygens that are two minus, a total of negative charge of negative four. The only way zero is equal to negative four is if we add negative four to the right, to the left side. So, and so this guy, four electrons here, so oxygen is being reduced. Reduction is gaining electrons. Now, when I put these guys back together, I have to put them back together so two, electro two electrons and four electrons cancel each other out. So the only way two electrons and four electrons cancel is if you multiply two electrons by a factor of two. So you want four electrons gained and four electrons lost so that you have a net change of electrons of zero. Remember the 
matter can neither be created nor destroyed. Energy can neither be created nor destroyed. It can only be transferred. Well, the same thing with electrons. We are not losing electrons or gaining electrons. They are just being transferred. So we have to have four electrons on the left, four electrons on the right in order for all the thing to make sense. So I put these together. Zinc, everything here needs to be multiplied by two to get four electrons, two zinc, two plus, two zinc. And those four electrons, oxygen. So let's, let's, oh geez, what did I do? Ah, no, no, no. Okay. Okay, so basically when I put these over top, I would have essentially this. Two zinc goes to two zinc, two plus, and four electrons. And I add this to four electrons, O2, and two O2 minus. So I'm going to add those guys up. Everything that is identical on the left and the right cancel out. And so we're left with two zinc, carries down, one oxygen, and then I'm going to put those guys back together into that compound of two zinc oxide. Everything that's on the left and the right that are identical cancel out. Everything that's not identical just carries down. The simple one, you don't have to do much to it, but the hard ones gets a little bit trickier. Now this one is not as abundantly clear. Tin two and iron three goes to tin four and iron two. Each of these guys, this looks like a balanced equation. Yo, know, well there's one iron there and one iron there. There's one tin there, there's one tin there. Looking at it, just by element alone, you say this is balanced. But if you look at it from the perspective of uh, the charges, you have two and three makes five. You have four and two makes six. You lost an electron somewhere in here. So you need to get this balanced. You need to get this balanced. So I'm going to split it. Step one, I split this, tin two, tin four, iron three, iron two. The atoms are balanced, so we can skip step two. Step three, I add the electrons. So two plus equals four plus, only if you say four minus two. So four minus two is equal to two, so two equals two. So we're good on this. 3 equals to 2, only a 3 minus 1. So 3 minus 3 plus 1 electron makes this 2 plus. So iron is being reduced, tin is being oxidized. Now the greatest common factor between 1 electron and 2 electrons is 2. So I'm going to have to double the amount of iron. Double the amount of iron, double the electrons. You add this up. Two electrons cancels two electrons, and you're given iron two plus two iron three, uh, two one ten two, that's two iron threes, goes to one ten four and two iron twos. So let's add up our charge two, five, eight, four, six, eight. So now we have a total charge of eight on the left total charge of eight on the right. Now we know this guy is fully balanced. The elements are balanced and the charges are balanced. That is the big new thing that comes in in this chapter. We have to make sure the charges are balanced. It's not an issue in most of our chemistry so far because we haven't had too many charged ions lying around. We've just had neutral compounds most of the time. But let's just look at our acid-base reaction. I just want to quick refresh back to this. When we've looked at acid-base reaction, let me say two waters split up into hydronium and 
hydroxide. You had neutral on the left, you had a positive and you had a negative on the right. But one plus added onto one minus gives you neutral. So everything we've been doing is still been neutral. Uh, let's let's look at like say at HCl, like just the dissociation reaction. It splits into H plus and Cl minus. This guy's been neutral. Like say if we did like uh, HCl, well let's say a weak acid titrating a, a strong base. This is negative one on the on the left. Well, that becomes water and F minus, negative one on the right. All these reactions we've been doing, the charges have been balanced. All these reactions we've been doing, all these chapters, the charges have been balanced. We just never took the time to really notice that because we always just assume, oh, it's gonna take care of itself. We didn't really have to think about that. So now that we're actually dealing with electrons being transferred, we do have to actually consider charges. Now, first clicker question. Remember, as you can, you can always send me the uh, email with the clicker if you can't get into the clicker poll. Send me an email, I'll get it. Identify the reduction half reaction. So remember, reduction is gain oil rig right so which one of these guys is being reduced there's two of them that are showing a reduction reaction but only one of them makes sense with what's actually occurring in this chemistry Give you to the two minute mark. Ugh. Think about this. Which one of these is showing a reduction and which one of these reductions matches what's actually happening? Which one of these guys balances the charges on both sides? Uh, Four, three, two, one. Your guys are coming in at the buzzer here. Correct one is fluorine. Fluorine, once we got it, a lot of people got it. Fluorine, F2 is gaining two electrons become f2 2 f minus two zero plus two negative equals two negative so the charges have to be balanced and the uh I say going from zero to negative that is reduction so reduction is when we gain the electrons to the left so this one zero plus two negative does not equal two positive this is showing the oxidation. And then once again, that one doesn't make sense. So C is showing the oxidation? C is showing the oxidation. Oxidation is loss of electrons. Ah, uh, okay, I see. Okay. Now, how to balance complex reactions. This one's where it's not just literally element and element. So, we have to treat these in acidic solutions. 
So in complex reactions, there's more than just two elements present. We have to take a little bit different approach, including adding acids and base and water to balance out hydrogens and oxygens. The if, you, if you're reading the book, this is a little different from the book. I really like my way, but as I said, if, if, you're, if you're stuck reading the book and you have to go, oh, if you somehow find the book easier, better, whatever, go, go with it, whatever. As long as you get the right answer, it doesn't really matter because you're going to get the same answer if you do it right. Some of these things are, the first two steps are the same. Step five and step six are the same. The new ones are step three, four, and seven. So step one is you split the reactions into half oxidation reduction, half reactions. Step two, you balance any non-hydrogen, non-oxygen elements. Like for example, I might balance the tin or I might balance the what, like I'm balancing the, the, the I'm balancing the metals that aren't gonna be in an acid, the metals that aren't gonna be in water. Now here's where it gets a little interesting. So when you look at, is there an oxygen present in there that isn't undergoing oxidation? Is there oxygen present there? How do you balance the oxygens if there's oxygen on the left, but not on the right? If there's oxygen on the left half of the reaction, not on the right, we have to add oxygen source somewhere. Now, most of this oxidation reduction chemistry occurs in water. So we can say that the water is actually gonna take a part in here. So we're gonna add water to the equation where the oxygens here is going to balance the oxygens on the right side or left side. Now there's a problem. As you add oxygen from water, you're also adding hydrogens. So we're also going to add hydrogens here. So how do we balance that? We're going to have to add hydrogens to the, to the opposite side to balance that out. Now, because we've added a bunch of hydrogens here, the charge is gonna be a little bit more complex. So we have to balance the total charge on both sides by adding electrons. Then we're gonna recombine. And now here's the new thing, because we've probably added water to both half reactions, some of the waters will add up, some of them will cancel out, and we'll figure out how many waters are left in the end. If we try to just do this without splitting up the reactions, it becomes super duper complex. So I'm gonna go ahead and do one problem like this and then end the meeting and start the next one. So, so looking at man permanganate plus oxalate goes to manganese two plus and carbon dioxide. This is a hot mess. MnO4 one minus, C2O4 two minus, so three minus on this side goes to two plus. So this is gonna be super difficult, but hopefully you can see I can split up manganese and manganese, carbon and carbon. That's pretty straightforward. You break them into the two half reactions. It doesn't matter which one's the oxidation, which one's the reduction. We will figure that out in a minute. Step two, we balance the, the metals. So manganese, one manganese, one manganese. That's good. One, two carbons, one carbon, I have to double the amounts of carbons. That's good now. Now here's where step four, I add water to balance the oxygen. So there's four oxygens here, zero oxygens there. So I have to add four waters. So now I have four oxygens, four oxygens, one manganese, one manganese. There's now four oxygens, two times two is four oxygens. No water is needed. Next step, I'm adding hydrogens to balance out the hydrogens. Hydro so there is eight hydrogens on the right. So now there has to be eight hydrogens on the left.
This guy, no hydrogen at all, so no hydrogen needed. Now here's where it gets a little tricky. So we're, we have to add up the total charges of both sides and add electrons to neutralize this out. So normally we'd say, okay, that's one minus, that's two plus. But now it's eight plus and one minus. Eight minus one is seven. So we have seven plus on the left, two plus on the right. The difference between seven and two is five. So I'm adding five electrons to the left. How would we have done this oxidation wise? Manganese is seven plus. You could have figured that out using the hints. Manganese goes from seven plus to two plus. Seven plus is what? five electron change. Still the same oxidation number. You're just making it a little bit easier. This is two minus, that's neutral. So I have to add two electrons to make two minus equal two minus. Now here's where we get the pain in the ass. We have five electrons, an odd number, two electrons, an even number. The greatest common factor between five and two is 10. Yeah. So <clears throat> there's no easier number. So we multiply this reaction by two. So eight times two, one times two, five times two, one times two, four times two. That right there, 16, two, 10, two, eight, and then five times one, five times two, five times two. And now, so we're just simply, and then the, since there's no hydrogens on both sides, nothing gets canceled out. There's no waters on both sides, so nothing gets canceled out. So I just add these guys together. So there's my 16 protons. There's my two permanganates. There's my five oxalates. There's my two manganese. There's my eight waters, and there's my 10 CO2s. What do you do with the 10 electrons? The 10 on the left cancel out the 10 on the right. Oh, okay, okay. So, the, so I was wrong. Those are the only duplicated compounds is the electrons. So always you should have the same amount of electrons left as right. Now let's make sure this is balanced. 16 plus minus two is 14. Minus 10 is four. Two times two is four. Four positive overall on the left, four positive overall on the right. Two manganese on the left, two manganese on the right. <clears throat> 16 hydrogens on the left, 16 hydrogens on the right. Here comes a little hard. Two times four is eight, plus four, five times or is 20, 28 oxygens on the left. Eight times one is eight, 10 times two is 20, 28 oxygens on the right, 10 carbons, 10 carbons. Every element is balanced, every charge is balanced. And that's how you would do this. And I'm gonna start the next meeting in like a minute or two, with a practice problem. So be ready to jump back in. I'll give a few minute break to get as many back as we can. But one last thing is we will add, sometimes you'll do this under basic conditions. So to get this from acidic to basic, we just add hydroxide to both sides until all acid is neutralized and converted to water. So acid plus base gives you water. So if I add, 16 waters, so let me just quick add a note. So if I add plus 16 OHs and plus 16 OHs to both sides. So suddenly I have, on the left, I have 16 waters and now I have eight waters on the, the right. So I cancel out eight with eight and so 
oh, okay, so we've just switched the water goes over here and the base goes on the other side. So I just add the hydroxide to both sides and it usually flips this around, flips the script. The water goes over here and the base goes over there. <clears throat> now look at the charges. Two minus plus 10 minus is tw negative 12. Four plus and plus 16 minus is also negative 12. Charges are once again balanced. <clears throat> so, so either way, we'll do a couple practice problems like that in just a minute, but I will see you after I restart the meeting. <laughs> okay. The best way to practice this is to really just do problems. I mean, because otherwise it is a hot mess. So I'm going to go ahead and work this out directly on the screen. So this one, hydrogen peroxide and chromium, three plus, goes to water and dichromate. So this one, it, it doesn't matter what the answer you get, as long as it's balanced, it might be a hot mess. So let's split this into two parts. Hydrogen peroxide goes to water and chromium goes to dichromate. So first things first, balance any non-oxygen elements. So I'm going to add to this side, you know, two chromiums goes to two chromiums. Now I balance any oxygens by adding water. So now this guy, two oxygens, one oxygen, I'm going to just add another water. So that's now two waters. This guy's a little bit harder. So there's seven oxygen, so I'm going to have to add seven waters here. It's also a little bit harder because I might, I wish I had a bigger computer screen. Now, uh, now I'm going to balance the amount of hydrogens by adding H plus to both sides. So this one has four hydrogens. This side has two hydrogens. So I add two H plus. So two H plus, so now we have four hydrogens, four hydrogens. This one has now 14 hydrogens on the left. So I'm gonna have to add 14 H pluses on the right. This Dichromate is a hot mess. It is to deal with, which is why working this systematically makes it a lot easier. Now, let's balance the electrons. So this side is still neutral. Water is still zero. Peroxide is now two plus. So the way I get it from two plus to neutral is I have to add two electrons because to plus, positive two minus two is a zero. And that's what we want, zero on both sides. Now this guy, three plus means this is gonna be positive six on the left, 14 plus and two minus makes this 12 plus on the right. So, Let's look at this, six plus, 12 plus. So what do I have to do to make this neutral? I have to get this equal to this. I can't add positives to add a negative. So I'm gonna add six electrons to the right side. 
So let's rewrite these now. So I have 2H plus plus peroxide plus two electrons goes to two waters. And the other one is two chromium plus seven waters goes to dichromate, Cr2O7, one minus, or two minus, 14 protons, and six electrons. I'm gonna erase some of this stuff so I can. Okay, so with that in mind, <laughs> that in mind, what is the greatest common factor between these two? 14. Do so we want to compare the oct the number of electrons? So fourteen is definitely not the number, even if uh, twelve. If no, so six. 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 Yeah, we can do this even easier. We can do six. twelve, but we could all, then would have to simplify this later. So the greatest common factor between two and six is six. So. All that means is that this whole side, this whole side needs to be multiplied by three. So I'm going to add that up. So six hydrogens, three peroxides, six electrons goes to six waters. Now, as I add these together, everything that appears on the left and right side gets canceled out. Six electrons cancel six electrons. Six waters cancels six of the seven waters. Six protons cancels six of the 14 protons. So as we rewrite this with everything canceled out gone, we have two chromiums plus, oh geez, what the hell just happened? Plus three peroxides plus water goes to eight protons and dichromate, Cr2O7. What has happened? Oh, holy We've Jesus. lost our water. Our water from the right has been transferred to the left. This, this product is no longer there. It is now on the left. Where's the oxygen gone? Where's the oxygen that is being changed gone to heat nope evaporated nope where's Broken the up. source of oxygen where is it no it's still in the it's, reaction it's in the cr 7 2 minus well yeah cr 2 7 yes very good it has Nerd. just been encapsulated into the dichromate it's, been, it's not being lost, it's just been transferred into a compound. So, so, but let's make sure everything's balanced. Two chromiums, two chromiums. Six, seven, eight hydrogens, eight hydrogens. Three, six, seven oxygens, seven oxygens. Charges, six plus, eight minus two, six plus. So this whole thing, it's balanced. So this is where step, step, no, oh, sorry. So the final reaction is that guy. And it doesn't matter which order you put the elements in. You, you get the same answer. It's the same answer if you put peroxide first or the chromium first. Oh, that's a lot of work. Yeah, it is. So is acid-base titrations, but yet most of you managed to do that.
as I said, I'm not sure if I'm going to give this as on a test, but I'm going through this as if we were. So this guy, HO2 minus, that's a peroxide anion, proxy, proxy anion goes to hydroxide, and sulfide, sulfurous acid goes to hydrogen sulfate. So, so the split up HO2 minus what goes to OH minus H2SO3 goes to HSO4. So the first one you do, you try to balance the oxygens? The first one you try to do is balance every non oxygen, non hydrogen. So there is no non-oxygen, non-hydrogens, and there's equal amounts of sulfurs. So that's good. Then I add waters to balance the oxygens. So step three, I'm adding water. I'm adding water. And this guy, three oxygens, four oxygens, I'm gonna add one water here. Now this may seem contradictory because I this is basic conditions, but I'm gonna add hydrogen next, H plus. Even though this is basic, I'm gonna add H plus first in order to balance the number of hydrogens out. And I'll fix it later. So there's three hydrogens on the left, one hydrogen, oh sorry, three hydrogens on the right, one hydrogen on the left, so this one's getting two hydrogens on the left. There's four hydrogens on the left, one hydrogen on the right, so I'm adding three hydrogens. Now, finally, I balance the electrons. So two plus one, two plus negative one is one. So this one's positive one. This one is negative one. I almost tripped myself. I'm like, what the hell did I just do? But no, positive one does not equal negative one. So how do I get positive one to negative one? I add two electrons. This guy's neutral. This guy's positive two. How do you get positive two to to a neutral, you add two electrons. Did you get the, how'd you get the positive two? One oh, minus. Well. Right, that's neutral. That's not neutral. You gotta remember, how many elements do you have? Two protons. Two protons is? Two plus. Two plus. One minus makes it but we're talking about the we're talking about the hydrogen sulfide right now, aren't we? Oh, okay. How do I? Because one minus three plus is two plus, and then add two minus. This guy's neutral because that is no charge. That is no charge. Okay. 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 No charge plus no charge is no charge. Right. 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 Okay. Okay. I see what I, I, I got confused. Okay. Greatest common factor between two and two is not four, not eight, not 16, it's two. 24. Yeah, now, so now we just add these puppies together. So H O two one minus plus H two S O three plus two protons plus water goes to HSO4 one minus plus three protons plus OH minus plus water. So water cancels out, water cancels out. Two protons cancels with one of the two protons. 
And funnily enough, one proton plus is like say one proton plus one hydroxide. What is hydrogen plus hydroxide give you? Water. So this just becomes water. So even this doesn't matter with whether it's acidic or basic conditions because you get the same answer. You get sulfite and goes to HSO4 and water. So basically, this guy's transferring an oxygen to here and a hydrogen gets transferred to there. And so we're just exchanging oxygen and hydrogen. So, can you go back real quick? I, what was the answer to that one? Oh, you're looking at it now. Yeah, right. Um, HO2 minus goes to plus H2SO3 gives you water and hydrogen sulfate. So, now that may be a pain in the ass to do in practice. It's not the majority of this chapter. The majority of this chapter will be learning how to use voltaic cells and understanding them and calculating voltage and looking at tables. So that's just looking at what is the actual chemistry going on, but how can we actually use these guys? And that's where we come to voltaic cells. You know, every battery, is a voltaic cell. Every battery that we ever used is utilizing this chemistry here. They're consistent of two half reactions. They each produce electrical energy as a voltage that is capable of doing work. Now such there's such batteries we call voltaic cells or galvanic cells after the, basically the pioneers that first started playing around with these guys. Uh, a lot of Italian chemists Basically, Europe was a hotbed of chemical activity at the time. We had Luigi Galvani, Alessandro Volta. I mean, it doesn't really matter whether it's Spain or France or Britain, it's all over the place. Everyone's uh, doing lots of chemistry right then. But so, what is going on? So, to make a voltaic cell, you need two individual cells, you need two electrodes, you need some sort of conducting fluid. They're going to be connected by a salt bridge and a wire that's going to connect the two electrodes together and the salt bridge is going to connect the two fluids together. So we need so, and that wire has to be hooked up to something to draw off energy or else you're not going to do work. It's just going to, hey, keep running to it. It kills itself. So if you have a short in a battery, you can't, the battery no longer works because Essentially, you have a way to bypass the wire that you draw energy out of it. And so it's just basically going to run itself to death. It's like a hamster on a treadmill that doesn't stop until it keels over. So you have a, so each cell is, is made up of one, one of them is a reduction, the other is an oxidation. So those half reactions are going to be what's present and going on in our two halves of the voltaic cells. So if you're missing one of those cells, you're missing the salt bridge, you're missing the wire, you're missing an electrode, it's not gonna work. So if you don't have a good salt bridge, it's like when we used to make batteries and like in lab, it, we did this at Purdue when I was in like grad school, we did that in chemistry class. Like if, you, if your salt bridge wasn't good enough, your battery just will not work. You want to be able to test anything because you need to be able to, you need to be able to have the current make a complete loop. This is also one of those reasons why you don't want to play around with your car battery because you, you don't want to be part of that complete loop when you start playing around. You don't want to be connect the two electrodes and give yourself a nasty shock. So you're saying if I touch both ends of the battery? Yes. Uh, well, we won't be listening to your wonderful voice next uh, week. That's why that when you 
try to jump a battery, they say positive, positive, negative ground. They don't want you to be grab the positive and negative electrodes at the same time and thus risk you connecting the circuit positive to negative. You'd get Leichtenberg <laughs> figures though, and that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, for all for like a few minutes and then you're dead. Unless you have someone with like a, a wooden broom to smack you away. But, Did they get superpowers like that? Uh, if by superpowers you mean like the ability to see God. <laughs> <laughs> so, sure. Well, okay. <laughs> we will. We will do this. We will do this uh, slide and then finish. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, so just looking at this battery, half cells are divided into two things, the anode and the cathode. Anode is the minus, the cathode is the plus. What's an easy way to remember that? Anode sounds like anion. Cathode sounds like cation. You know, the things we learned earlier, anode negative, cathode positive. Now, here's another really nifty trick that, that works. Oxidation occurs at the anode. Oxidation starts with the vowel, anode starts with the vowel. Uh, the, the reduction occurs at the cathode. Reduction is a consonant, cathode is a consonant. So. But if you want to look at it chemistry-wise, the electron flees from the negative. It goes towards the positive. The anode, the electron flees its negative because two negative things repulse. The electron flows to try to get to the positive because positive and negative attract. Now, as this goes on, you would see a buildup of charge on one side. So how do we keep that from happening? We have the salt bridge that is connecting this. So there's the copper going into copper solution. Well, actually, the, the copper solution that's going on to the electrode as the electrons come in. And the zinc is dissolving into solution. So as this is occurring, this solution is getting more and more positive, more and more positive. And this solution is becoming less and less positive because we're losing copper. So we're seeing a buildup of charge in here and a loss of charge in there. So the salt bridge is there to keep things the same. So as the copper's lost, potassium from this potassium nitrate salt bridge is going into solution, replacing the copper. As zinc is going into solution on this side, nitrate is going in as well to keep the positive and negatives canceled out. So the salt bridge is keeping there from being a charge buildup on either side, which would result in a loss in spontaneity and make this reaction stop. Now, the voltaic galvanic cells always occurs in the spontaneous direction. So it's always gonna do work. The entropy of the universe is always gonna be increasing. And it's always written anode first. Now, here's the, the problematic thing that we're gonna leave you with. If there are several different reactions possible, it will always do the, the reaction that will create the largest voltage. And this can sometimes result in undesired reactions. So for example, if it's easier to oxidize water than it is to oxidize the metal, you're gonna oxidize water. And so you may not want this to happen, but if you put this in there, you might end up, say, splitting water into hydrogen gas. And that could be a problem if, say, you have a spark nearby. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. That's why sometimes batteries will explode because you're producing hydrogen and oxygen. And, uh, and then, you're, water, you, then, you start your, then you start your car, which has that little spark that, and then. Okay, then why does this not happen a lot more? Shouldn't this happen a lot more then? Because you said this is spontaneous. Well, some, that's because that one is not always the most preferred reaction. Not the, wa the, not the water? Not the water. Now, there is some, some overcharging 
overcharging where you put in enough energy that you do the lead acid battery reaction and some of that. But so long as that is minimal, the oxygen and hydrogen can be released safely without causing an explosion. Or sometimes you mix something else in there. You get something in your battery that's impurity that's going to cause their main reaction not to go. So, so I mean, the battery is made so you, the water one isn't the most spontaneous one. But I know I when I like, I was testing some battery things for electrolyte thing. If I use a battery to light the light bulb, instead of lighting the light bulb, I end up splitting the water. As I see bubbling in the solution. But if I use the uh, the DC voltage and plug it directly into the wall, then I can light the light bulb. So that I'm not sure if I did that demo for you guys or not, but where you plug it in and you test well, distilled water, the light bulb doesn't light up, and the salt water, it does. Because well, it has the ions. Yeah. Well, if I, instead of plugging it into a wall socket, if I instead plugged it into, a, like, a battery, used a battery to try to light up the light bulb, it wouldn't light up the light bulb. It would just have enough energy to split the water, but not, and so you'd suddenly see bubbling where the two wires touch the water. So. And then we, and then we light a lighter. So you talked about uh, the explosive gas. Is there a way to prevent the production of the gas? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, one, it's like you, in this case, uh, it's like as long as you're not overcharging the battery, you're not always making that explosive gas. And two, a lot of batteries have a valve in there to prevent a large buildup of explosive gas. So if it, if you start to get some building up, it can like burp it off a little bit at a time, such to such an extent that you're you're not enough to make an explosion. So if you had one of these out in the open, it would it would, you wouldn't have to worry about an explosion because it would no, just, not really because you just like it, a little bit of hydrogen gas or a little bit of oxygen gas. Yeah, it's not going to be enough to create a like a boring fire but if you have it build up the valve's not working and you produce a okay. lot of it all of a sudden yeah you could have an explosion but and sometimes like how if there's a way to make the main reaction not occur then you would probably use the next available reaction for example if your battery lost all of its active material that makes it work if suddenly the zinc electrode fell off and suddenly the electrode is now something becomes something else. We no longer have that zinc to dissolve. It's going to choose the next available reactant. So idea is going to be use the most spontaneous one and then use the next most spontaneous one and so on and so forth until you get the lowest one. And if you just like the same way with acid base. We use the strongest acid to neutralize the base first, and then we use the next strongest, and so on and so forth. So if I had acetic acid and hydrochloric acid in water, I would, the, and added base, the hydrochloric acid would work before the acetic acid would. And if I kept adding base, eventually you would start neutralizing the acetic acid. So, but that's what I'm going to leave you with today. Just some stuff to think about starting tomorrow. Well, not tomorrow. Starting Monday, we will, we will actually look at how do we calculate some voltages. And it's really not that bad. It's there's some tables. And it, the, sp the spontaneous one is going to be the most positive one. So literally, what are we going to have to do? We're going to have to take two numbers, sub subtract them. And then I was like, oh. And you try to get the one that gives you the most positive number. So is it this minus this or this minus? Well, the one's going to be a negative number. The other's going to be a positive number. Okay. So that's where we're going to end for today. Be working on that homework. Try to keep things up. If if I have the time, I will. We will do nuclear chemistry. 
because this is not super long of a chapter. We probably have <laughs> homework about nuclear chemistry, so which is double yes, I guess. And it probably won't be on the, the test, but hey, well, I'll, at the very least, I'll post the videos so you can watch them later. You have no idea how excited I am. Fair enough. Okay. So this has been the Chemistry Cowboy. Once again, if you like what you see, please like, please subscribe. I'll be posting more videos to give you the education you need. And I've been asked to put this disclaimer at to Bethel students. Remember that the log and the online learning guidelines remain in effect while interacting with any type of instructional materials slash sessions. That's it. Over and out.